I've got the trough in the back of my truck. I've got to take out in the pasture. I normally don't drive my truck out in the pasture. That's because bison can, uh, they like to rub up against uh, the exterior of your truck, lights, against your mirrors, and they can bust stuff up and they can scratch the heck out of your vehicle. So I don't take my truck in here often, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it in here now. Hopefully they don't come up while I'm in here. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So I got something new today for Dunbar and the whole herd. I got a new feed trough. It's gonna be a good test. Here's why. A lot of you have seen how Dunbar is, especially in the middle of breeding season. He likes to beat on troughs, uh, not gates off the hinges. He likes to make a lot of noise. He likes to just to beat on stuff. He's just being a bull and uh, he's in the middle of rut. We're in the middle of breeding season. So a lot of you have made comments on what type of color the feeder should be. Maybe paint it or paint the gates a different color and see if he won't um, mess with them as much. I think I've come to a conclusion. I don't think it's the paint color. I think he, he truly just enjoys the fact that he can knock the plastic liner out of these feeders that I'm not gonna buy anymore. If you're wanting to start your herd or you're a new bison producer, this is what feed trough not to get. You can see daylight through there. <sighs> yeah, uh, that's uh, that's from his horn. This is what Dunbar really likes, and this is why I think it's noise. This makes a lot of noise when he hits this thing, and I think he loves. He's completely knocked this. He knocks it completely out almost daily and we have to put it back in here. You can see the old screw holes where it was. He likes to take it off and he likes to hit this metal frame. It makes a lot of sound and I really think that Dunbar really likes this. Here, this is a solid feeder here okay he never he never hits on this Dunbar will never mess with this it's solid I know it doesn't have any color this one is kind of a reddish orange color we've even had to chain these uh, feeders down because Dunbar will carry them off um, I did a video over that um, I think last year or this past fall because uh, he had a lot of fun with it and even threw it out in the middle of the pasture and I had to go get it. This is the feed trough not to get. I can tell you, you need a solid feed trough. One of the things that you can get is you can get the concrete um, feed troughs. I don't think they're that expensive. However, wherever you put them, that's where they're probably gonna stay for a long time. We're not ready to do that yet, so that's why I haven't bought those feed, that's why I have not bought concrete feed bunks yet. So I am in the middle of converting from not, not these troughs, but the full metal troughs, solid one piece metal troughs is what I'm, I'm slowly converting to. I'm just not gonna buy, go buy a whole bunch because they are expensive. I'm gonna slowly get there and We've been feeding them since we took the bulk feeder out. We've been feeding them by hand using our five gallon buckets daily. And I noticed that we need more feeders. We've got 13 bison and the calves like to get in there too. And so we like to spread them out. So here's our feeding system. So cuts right through here. So we've only got three here. And then over by where the new barn is, we've got one there and one there. So we have a total of five feed troughs right now but you have a couple of queen bees. You've got Dunbar. Uh, you've got some mamas, part of those queen bees. 
and they like to have their own feed trough and that's part of the hierarchy system um, that these bison have in their social system and so a lot of the young ones are kind of shoved to the side and I don't like that they need to get feed just as much as the adults and if any of them need feed it's those young heifers especially that uh, I'll hope to uh, get bred this year so I got another trough I'm gonna go ahead and set it up here in our line and they're spread out pretty pretty distant I'll kind of have to keep an eye on it and make sure some of the young uh, bison we have are still eating just as much as the adults we'll see how it goes I know it's red but I love uh, that it's coated it's painted and I think it prevents that rust um, from settling in for a, for a while so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes in the meantime with uh, with this feeder Okay, we've got our other feed bunk set. That means we have a total of six feed bunks, feed bins, feed troughs, whatever you want to call them. We've got six now, and uh, they are spread out, you know, I'd say probably at least 10 feet apart. And uh, we like to put them up against the post from our uh, exterior corral. We like to set them up against there, and because uh, you don't want the bison getting on the other side of it. Um, you just want them feeding here or another thing you can do a lot of cattle people do this is you can put it out here I could line them out in the middle if I wanted to um, but here's the thing is I don't we try to reduce getting in the pen with them as much as possible so we just simply reach over we reach over the fence to feed the bison here and like Kevin, my stepdad, he feeds for me a lot. And so just to make it easy to prevent people from getting in here in case my mom has to feed or my wife or somebody, a family member has to feed, they can just simply reach over and feed them this way. If we had them lined out here, you've got to have a feed truck um, with a feeder on the back of it or an ATV or something like that to feed, to feed them. But maybe someday we can do that with a feed truck if we um, grow, which is what I wanna do. I wanna be able to grow and grow the herd and maybe someday we'll be able to do that. But right now we don't need to, plus it's just safer, which is the main thing. One of the other things is we feed our bison right now, since we took the bulk feeder out, they're not eating as much, but there is still a lot of grass left and the bison are still grazing. But we feed our bison about two to three pounds per head per day. And we can kind of balance that out. You can feed them in the mornings all at once. You can feed them in the evenings all at once. Or you can split that up and do some in the morning and some in the evening. That's kind of our magic range is the two to three pounds uh, per head of our four-way blend that we use. Since I got my truck out here in the pasture, I don't know where the bison are. I kind of want to go see them. I'm a little nervous to drive my truck out there. I usually just take the ATV, so I may chance it just to see where they are and see if I get them rounded up, I'll get them up here and we'll feed them. All right, I found the bison down in the bottom pasture. You guys hungry? Woo! -hoo! No response.
Well, guys, I have an announcement to make. Um, I know it may be a little late uh, to announce this, but I had some people, it, it made me think of it, I had some, some followers uh, reach out to me and ask how school was and how football was. Well, um, currently I am not coaching and teaching. I'm actually taking a year off uh, from teaching and coaching. And um, it was a big move for my wife and I, our, our little family. I am uh, being a stay-at-home dad. That's number one. I am being a cabin boy, taking care of our, our cabins. And in case you didn't know, we have a, a 10 rental cabins in Sulphur, Oklahoma. It's called Rocky Point Cabins. And then also, I get to take care of these amazing um, majestic animals. And so uh, I just got really busy um, with, with the whole balance of everything. And we're running a family business now. You've got the bison. And then you add a baby to the mix. Uh, it gets really busy really fast. And so we made the decision uh, for me to stay at home. My wife still works. Um, but I try to take care of everything else. And it's been really good. I, I know COVID has been hard on a lot of families. It's been hard on our country. And I'm very thankful that it's been a blessing for us in relation to raising baby Brooks and being able to spend a lot of time with her. Couldn't be more blessed and thankful for that as well. Couldn't be more thankful uh, to raise such a cool animal, such an amazing animal. Still, I'm always learning from these guys and I really love it and enjoy it. And I'm lucky to have good animals. They've been really good to us, minus the time Dunbar let everybody out. But other than that, we'll forgive him. Hopefully he doesn't ever do it again. We've really enjoyed it, and my family uh, has loved this experience so far. And so thank you guys for following us. Thank you for subscribing to us if you have. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to us. Uh, we just enjoy raising the uh, American bison right here, our America's mammal. Just stop and watch them for a little bit and um, just soak it all in because these animals at one time, one time, almost completely vanished from our planet. And we're lucky to still have them today. I'm gonna do my part to try to get those numbers up. It may take a long time, and I'm just a, about this big on the whole perspective of raising bison, but we can do it by raising one bison at a time. And I believe that, and so just thankful for that. Don't run me off, please. I ain't gonna be in your way. Hey, get off my truck. Peaches, get off my truck. <laughs>